Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, I'm going to talk about silicon bugs again. Now, I've mentioned these before in one of the very first blogs I did. Um, in this case, silicon bugs in PIC microcontrollers. Now, it's, it's not a problem with just PICs, it's every micro and you know every type of processor on the market has silicon bugs in them and uh, it's a trap for young players and as I mentioned before you've got to read the silicon errata uh, data sheet for the device you're actually um, intending to use in your projects just in case there's a feature in there that doesn't work or it has bugs in it um, that you're going to have problems with later down the track and it's better to know that up front and yeah, you guessed it, I've been caught out again. This is the new project I'm working on. It's my new credit card scientific calculator. And there's a quick sneak peek of it, but that's all you're going to get, okay? Anyway, it's a credit card scientific calculator slash computer. It's based on a PIC uh, 24FJ uh, 256K part. It's the 16-bit PIC 24F series, just, on like my, just like on my microwatch project and um, yeah I hooked it up and of course it didn't work first go it didn't the uh, the uh, pick kit programmer couldn't see the device at all and um, you know Murphy's law you know the thing never works first go so I checked out all the lines and everything the ICSP the in circuit serial programming bus on uh, PIC microcontrollers, it only has five pins, it's very simple, there's clock, data, ground, power, and the programming uh, pulse. And that's it, so I checked those lines and they're all working just fine. And uh, so I, you know, had I fried my chip? It's one of these little um, really tiny uh, 0.5 millimeter pitch uh, devices, you know, and and they're, they're easily damaged and pin shorted and all sorts of things. But I checked it all out and there was nothing wrong. The uh, MP Lab and the PIC kit programmer just wouldn't talk to my chip at all. And I was scratching my head for a little while, debugging it, and then it, you know, I came to the conclusion either it's a dead chip or there's something else going on. Yep, you guessed it, it's a damn silicon bug. And yes, I followed my own advice back in my very early blog. I, um, I read the silicon errata for this uh, PIC device first before I, before I put it on my board and, and got the first prototype manufactured. I checked it out and there were, there were quite a few bugs in there, but they didn't seem um, all that relevant to what I was uh, doing, really. Or they wouldn't be serious, I could overcome them easily or something like that. So, yeah, I thought, okay, that's fine, I'll use that chip. And I didn't give it a second thought until now, until it didn't work. I checked this, downloaded the silicon errata data sheet for the PIC chip again, and what do you know? Here it is on page six, module ICSP. I don't know if you can read that, but anyway, ICSP, yes. It basically says the ICSP port pair uh, number three does not, uh, cannot be used to read or program the device. In other words, it doesn't bloody well work at all. And of course, Murphy's Law, this particular PIC chip, it's a 64 pin one, has um, three of these ICSP buses. It's really quite neat. It means that um, when you're laying out the board, you can choose whichever um, data and clock pair you want from three different ones. And I was intending to use number one, which doesn't have a problem at all. Um, but very late in the design process, the layout of this thing, I thought, oh, it'd be nice if I use number three instead. And I didn't remember that when I read this, uh, you know, a bit before, that it had a problem with number three, the ICP, ICSP bus number three. And I didn't recheck the silicon errata, and lo and behold, Murphy's Law says that, you know, if I'm going to pick the, you know, if I'm going to pick that particular pair, it's going to be the wrong one. And I picked number three, and number three doesn't work. Ah! And of course,
course, Murphy's Law works even deeper because there's two revisions of silicon, uh, Rev 3 and Rev 5. And Rev 5, it says on here, doesn't have the problem. But of course, I've got a Rev 3 chip, don't I? Yeah. One of the real funny things about these silicon errata data sheets, in particular these uh, microchip ones, is is that they um, they always word it as if like it's not a big deal and they always have a workaround. And uh, in this particular case, it, it basically says it cannot, you know, that particular pair cannot be used to read or program the device. Uh, and the workaround is, well, use either the first or the second one. Well, <laughs> no, no shit, Sherlock. Thanks for that. That's not a workaround. I mean, if this thing, if um, Microchip were an Australian company, this thing would read uh, something like, Ha! Sucked in, mate! This one doesn't work at all! This feature's rooted! Tough luck! Try the other ones! So there you go, it's another warning to check the silicon errata for any device you're going to use. And keep checking it during the design process. You know, I just can't win with Murphy. He gets me every time. Maybe I should give up engineering and get like a Jim's lawn mowing franchise or something like that. Ah. <sighs>